Hello, and welcome to the latest Eccentric Earth Minisode. I'm your host, Amy Walker, and this week we're going to be talking about Elizabeth Forster. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I have a dream. One day, this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its dreams. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created in the world will little note no longer remember what we say, but it can never forget what they did. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Elizabeth Forster, also known as Betty, was born on the 23rd of December 1886 in Georgetown, South Carolina. She was the middle of five children, and the family claimed to have been distantly related to George Washington through her mother's side. After finishing school, she enrolled in nursing courses at Union Memorial Hospital in Baltimore. She graduated in 1912 at the age of 26. Continuing her education, she then studied public health nursing at John Hopkins University. In 1913, Elizabeth was hired by the Visiting Nurse Association in Colorado Springs, and after two years was made a nursing supervisor. During the 1918 flu pandemic, she was hired by the mother of photographer Laura Gilpin to care for Laura, who was recovering from influenza. The two young women developed a deep friendship based on many shared interests. By the end of the year, with Laura recovered, Elizabeth left to work for the Red Cross. After serving for a year with that organisation, she returned to Colorado Springs and her supervisor's position job for the Visiting Nurse Association, where she worked until 1931. In 1930, whilst on a camping trip with Laura, the two ran out of gas on the Navajo Reservation. Elizabeth remained with the car, while Laura hiked off to find petrol. Whilst waiting for Gilpin to return, she was approached by members of the local Navajo tribe who came to see if she needed help, and she ended up playing cards with them. Elizabeth was deeply moved by the friendliness of the Navajo and immediately inquired about a job with them. She took a position in 1931 as public health nurse in Red Rock, Arizona for the New Mexico Bureau of Indian Affairs. Upon her arrival at the reservation, she found that no provisions for either her own lodgings nor for the medical supplies had been made. Securing a place to stay, she quickly adopted a position that her post would be a learning experience for her as well as for the Navajo. She made daily nursing rounds, visiting families in their traditional dwellings, and Laura often followed her around taking pictures, beginning a career of Native American photography that would make her famous. Rather than imposing Western medicine on her patients, Elizabeth encouraged use of traditional healing methods and rituals as complementary practices to her own nursing methods. During her birth, Elizabeth described, she assisted a Navajo midwife, allowing the practitioner to take the lead and only adding a few hygienic measures to the process. As an advocate for the Navajo to retain their autonomy, she became vocal in her criticism of both the Bureau of Indian Affairs and missionaries. She saw Christianization and forced education as detrimental to the self-determination of the tribe. A disagreement over whether medicine men should be condemned resulted in Elizabeth's resignation in 1933. Leaving the reservation, Elizabeth accepted a position with the Emergency Recovery Administration in Park County, Colorado, and was soon made a supervisor of that organisation. She worked there until 1936, when the administration was terminated, and then worked full-time on a turkey farm she and Laura Gilpin had started in 1935. After three years, the farm failed, and Elizabeth operated a guest house which she operated until 1942, before returning to nursing work during World War II. A health crisis occurred in 1944, which forced her to retire. She was diagnosed that August with an inflammation of the brain, and after being hospitalised, was also diagnosed with polio. Unable to care for herself, she was declared legally incompetent and was moved to her sister's home in Nebraska for care. After a year in recovery, the incompetency was annulled, and Elizabeth was well enough to join Laura at their new home in Santa Fe, New Mexico, though she was unable to resume working. For the remainder of her life, Elizabeth was cared for by Laura, who occasionally photographed Elizabeth over the 50 years of their companionship. Near the end of her life, Laura had to hire professional care for Elizabeth, but refused to place her in a nursing home. Elizabeth died on the 1st of January 1972 at the age of 86 in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and was buried at Evergreen Cemetery in Colorado Springs along with her sister. Elizabeth's deep affection for the Navajo people strongly influenced Laura's work and resulted in some of her most important photographs. 
Though at the time her approach to cross-cultural based public health work was rejected, today her work with the Navajo is seen as an important stepping stone and used by researchers in their analysis of both the study and development of public health policy. In 1988, Elizabeth's letters of her time among the Navajo were edited by Martha Sandwise and published as Denizens of the Desert, a tale in words and pictures of life among the Navajo Indians. The book was supplemented with photographs by Laura. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this minisode. If you enjoyed it, you can follow us on Twitter by going to at eccentric underscore earth. You can find us on Facebook by going to www.facebook.com forward slash eccentric earth. And we're on Instagram at eccentric earth. If you want to write in with any suggestions for future episodes or minisodes, or to contact us for any reason, our email address is eccentric earth at outlook.com. You can find the show on all major podcast providers and YouTube. So please make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss an episode and please leave us a review. Thank you for listening. We'll catch you next time. Bye.